Good afternoon. Thanks for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Our focus today is on the scams and scammers that take your money. During the past year, more than 5,000 Vermonters filed scam reports with the Attorney General's Consumer Assistance Program. And just as old scams continue, new ones emerge. So, to learn more about top scams and what you should know to protect yourself from scammers, we've called on Attorney General T.J. Donovan. Thank you so much for coming in to talk about this annoying yeah. and, 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 and really serious problem. Yes. So, uh, first off, um, you know, a lot of what we're going to talk about today uh, connects with the Consumer Assistance yeah. Program. So, tell us about CAP. It's also called CAP. Sure. The Consumer Assistance Program is a program that... <coughs> is part of my office but it's run out of UVM mm. and it's a great program because it's really unique in state government in that when Vermonters call and we get 13,000 calls a year you actually wow. talk to a real live person mm. and the goal is to resolve consumer complaints and it's a great partnership with the University of Vermont we bring in students to come in and to work right. and it's a great way for not only Vermonters to call <coughs> but for young Vermonters UVM students to talk to folks and try to resolve issues because you know this friend anytime you call state government oftentimes you get frustrated because you can't get an mm. answer and our mission there is you're not always going to solve people's problems but try to give them the information they need to make informed decisions to best protect themselves right and it gives the students such really good yeah. real experience a absolutely and, and it's a great portal into state government to understand how government works and sometimes doesn't, doesn't work. work. Right. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, you know, so more than uh, or, or nearly 5,500 consumer yeah. complaints came in a against scammers yeah. that, that were filed with CAP. And that's 40% of all complaints, yeah. consumer complaints that you get. It's And topping the, that list is social security yeah. number yeah. phishing. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about and, uh, well, a actually, let's just go for the top three. Sure. There was um, computer tech scamming. Yep. I've had that. Yep. Uh, fake sweepstakes. Yep. Um, and we'll come back to that list. But let's let's now go to the, the, the top one, that, yeah, sure. that social security sure. number phishing. Yeah, you know, scams are becoming more sophisticated. And obviously, they prey on vulnerable people. And they try to scare people. It's based on fear, right? right. And usually what happens with a social security scam is you get a call that your number has been compromised. It's been mm. breached, and we live in a world where we have data breaches, and it's real. And so there is an air of credibility to this. But they then ask you to either verify your number, give your number, don't do that. Don't do that. Or to pay a fine. And any time, here's the general rule, any time you're being asked, you get, a, you get a cold call to pay, whether it's your Social Security, whether it's this computer virus scam, mm. whether it's the IRS, whether it's a utility company, saying something bad is going to happen unless you pay. Here's the general rule. Don't pay. Don't pay over the phone. Right. And the government's not going to call you and demand payment over the <laughs> phone. Uh, private utility companies in Vermont are not going to call you and demand over the phone. So anytime you're being asked to pay over the phone, don't do it. And here's the other thing. Trust your gut. Because mm. th th these, these are pressured calls, mm. and that's truly what they are, that they're pressuring somebody that something bad is going to happen to you, um, y you know, that y unless you pay. Right. And I think what we have to do is educate folks that it's okay to hang up the phone, it's okay to say, I want to talk to a supervisor, it's okay to trust your gut, take a step back, and say, I want to call a friend. <laughs> Right, call yeah. a friend or, or call that company that they're saying is, right. is, is demanding the money, like, yeah. I'm, I'm going to clear this, because yeah. we're getting so many of these. Well, we're getting many of them, and they're really sophisticated. We live in an online world, and in order to engage in transactions, you got to be online. And when you talk mm -hmm. about that computer software scam, it's really scary. I know somebody very close to me who is well-educated, who has a good job, who works from who works remotely needs a computer right it scared me uh, I, I was almost on it so yeah tell us a little bit about more about that the computer well, that scam. one is you literally get that window to pop up on your screen saying you get a computer virus call and, and again it seems credible because it comes from you know like Microsoft or somebody right and so they say so they say and so you call and in this case and they say pay us money and we'll fix this virus and if you don't fix this virus well you're not going to be able to use your computer and then, ha as you know, how are you going to engage in a commercial transaction t in today's world without your computer, whether it's your handheld device or your uh, laptop at home? 
uh, how do you do work when we have so many remote workers? And so again, you have that air of, of, of pressure and credibility that you have to do this. And you then turn around and pay somebody and it turns out right. that it's a scam. So never pay. Never pay over the phone. Right. Ver verify, 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 verify. Hang up the phone. Right. You know, and, right. and here's the other thing I think, Fran, that for me, why we do these top 10 lists and really work with AARP a lot to raise mm. awareness about scams. Let's be honest, it hurts a lot of older Vermonters. Elders oh, are more vulnerable. Yeah, yeah they, they are because we live in a very isolated um, society. Mm -hmm. You know, we have a elder protection initiative in our, in our office and we went around the state on a listening tour and said, what are the issues facing elder Vermonters? One of the biggest ones was social isolation. Mm -hmm. And when you think about that, when you're isolated, when you're alone and you get that call and it's that, it's that, it's that high pressure call that something mm -hmm. bad is gonna happen, that grandparent scam, right? Right. That presumably your grandkid is uh, oh. in jail in Canada just... and needs five 5,000 bucks. Again, I know folks who have come real close to, be, to have fallen right. for that. Right. So we gotta educate people and what we have to do, I think, is this. Tell people this is happening to everybody. There's no shame. There's no embarrassment. That's a big part of this. This is why this right. stuff is successful because people are embarrassed and they're ashamed. They won't tell right. anybody. And what we gotta do is tell our stories that this is happening to everybody. They're on the rise. And the best thing we can do is share our stories with everybody so people feel informed and therefore protected that this stuff is happening. And, and know that it's happening to <coughs> everybody. And, and it's, a, it's a lot. Um, and there are even these Amazon, so many people yep. use Amazon. Yep. So this is a little further down the list, yep. but tell us quickly about the about the Amazon scam. Well, the Amazon scam again is, you know, and this goes into- and it could be other legitimate companies. Yes, right? and let's be clear, this is happening uh, across the board. And I just wanna put this out there because I wanna say one thing about when you're asked to pay. If you're ever asked to pay with a gift card. <laughs> really not. Okay, okay. <laughs> that's gonna be a scam too. And these things are so sophisticated, you know, where you get these gift cards and you go back and you have the, the code on the back of the card and you're, pay, and you're paying. So I just think that what we have to do for Vermonters is tell people that if you pick up the phone, number one, it's okay to hang up the phone. Vermonters are a civil bunch. Right. We're polite. Yes. <laughs> but in this case, it's okay to hang up the phone. And let's also tell people that, again, to call a friend if it doesn't feel right, to take 10 seconds and just say, I'll get back to you. Ask for a number, yeah. ask to, but I'll, I'll call back. I mean, I'll, I'll call back if you wanna be polite, but, and then check, <clears throat> you know, I'll, call I'll, your grandchild and make sure, see if they're okay. Yeah, and I'm a, I'm a believer in um, hanging up the phone. Yeah. And I don't think it's rude, I think, because the consequences are so great and you're gonna get ripped off. But let me tell you about the Amazon. Okay. Um, yeah. Uh, credit card phishing scam is. Um, the scam involves a robocall, which we should talk about. Right. Um, claiming to be from Amazon regarding outstanding charges to your Amazon account. Hmm. Uh, the scammers may claim that your credit card has been charged by Amazon and then it instructs you to call back to get a refund. Ah. Again, very sophisticated, very credible. A lot of people right. have Amazon accounts <clears throat> and that you can call to get a refund. And so, you gotta be aware of what's going on and you think about it, how busy we are, how many people are, are engaged in, in these online transactions that you said, okay. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I, I want my money back. I want my money back. Yeah, but it never went anywhere. No. <laughs> so that's Ooh. that's a tough one too. Scary. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> and this, you know, we, we, we will get people information about yep. where to go about all of these different scams, but because you talked about robocalls, yep. and phone is really the heart of all yep. consumer complaints, and, and, and we've talked about that. Is there anything that can be done about these calls? Did, has, has even, I know that, you know, Senator Welsh has, has worked yeah. out, there's, there's a bill yep. that just came out yes. to try to deal with this, but it's so sophisticated. Yeah. Is that gonna help? What can help? Yeah, so I get that question all the time, and the reality is this, from a state government perspective, right, as a law enforcement perspective, these scammers aren't in Vermont. So they're very hard to enforce, okay? And oftentimes they're out of the country. So I'm really glad that Congressman Welch and others have taken the lead and Congress acted because we gotta give the federal government teeth to hold these providers accountable. And it's, it's, it, it's and the And they're using local numbers. They're losing the local numbers. And we, we had a landline and we got rid of it, 
uh, but every night around 7.30 at our house, mm -hmm. the phone would start ringing. And of course, you'd see the number. And it was always an 802 number. It, right. wa it wasn't at first, but then all, all of a sudden it, it started was. to change to 802. Right. So we really need congressional action for the federal government to hold the providers accountable and say, you need to make sure that you're watching your own shop about who's abusing these, this technology Thank you. Right. that are then scamming Vermonters. You know, there was a stat, um, I don't know if it was in August of 19 or August of, of 2018, there was over <clears throat> 4 million right. robocalls into the state of Vermont. Wow. And that, that tells me one thing, that they're working. Right. Uh, but that's, think, think that's, about it's that. really, really frightening. And we're almost out of time, so I <clears> want to <throat> make sure that um, we, we get to a, um, yeah. your, your advice and, and who to contact. Yeah, well, call us at so, CAP, okay? okay. Uh, anytime. Anytime, yeah. anytime. And 649-2424, 649-2424. You will talk to a live person, Great. okay? And we're not going to be able to solve all your problems, but we can help you. Right. Number two, I know we're polite. I know we're civil. It's okay to hang up the phone right. <laughs> on these things. It's okay to ask questions. It's okay to ask for a supervisor. It's okay <clears throat> to ask a friend. And most importantly, let's not be embarrassed. Let's not be ashamed. This is happening to everybody. Right. Share your story so people are informed about what's going on. Fantastic. And you can also you can sign up for scam alerts. Yes, also. absolutely. And, and it's through that same number. Yes, and we will, you'll get my raspy voice on a, <laughs> on a, on a voice message saying be, be aware of this scam. Wow. Okay. So you can sign up for scam alerts. Yep. They won't come that often. They'll just um, they'll they'll let you know if new yep. scams are coming in. Uh, take take a look at the at the website. It's it's yep. very very helpful. And call CAP anytime. One eight hundred six four nine two four two four. Okay, T J Donovan. Thanks, thank Ryan. you so much for right. coming in Thanks and for helping us figure all of this out. And thank you for joining us across the fence. I'm Fran Stoddard.